Welcome, one and all, back to another episode of Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trage. I'm your host, Trage. Today, we're going to be talking the Brewers got a big win against the Cubbies last night. We're going to go over it, go over the box, talk a little bit about what we saw and what we think of the Brewers there in that first series of, uh, game against the Cubs there and leading into game two. We'll cover that also. And then we're looking at the Packers, that final preseason game they had. Roster cuts are today, so we'll cover them tomorrow. See who got cut. We have a few guys who have already been cut by the Packers, but we'll cover that. And then a little bit of Badger football. They have the Buffalo they have Buffalo coming up this weekend here, so we'll cover the Badgers a little bit. Just get into it a little bit here. Closer to the weekend, we will cover them in full. But with that, we're going to jump right into the Brewers. And a big win by the Brewers here last night there against the Cubbies. Wade Miley looked good for this Brewers team in this 6-2 to two finish for the Brewers. Wade Miley went six innings, two earned runs, had a strikeout in the game for the Brewers. Uh, two home runs, giving out the two solo shots there. They weren't really the... It was honestly a very good zone. Nothing was being called on the corners. It was a tight zone. And you take it with your wins and your losses there, but it didn't really affect... It affected Wade Miley. It didn't affect the hitters as much because the hitters had a true strike zone to be swinging at up there. They didn't have to chase. And that kind of got to Wade Miley there. Is Wade Miley had to really figure out how to pitch to guys without using those corners. And I thought Wade Miley looked good. For a guy who only throws tops 90 miles per hour and he can use corners, but he has to bring it in just a little bit, get guys hopefully to chase. Nobody's really chasing the Cubs. Did a really good job being patient up there with Wade Miley. But Wade Miley, no walks on the game. He used the corners. He got outs. There was, I mean, he got contact. There was hard contact against Wade Miley, but he got out of innings when he had to. There was that sweet line drive right back at him. He snagged that out of the air. Not even a look what I found kind of moment there. It looked like he caught that puppy. So good to see there out of Wade Miley to be able to pitch with a strike zone that was pretty tight for him there. While we're covering the pitchers, we'll just roll right through the pitchers there. Elvis Paguero came in relief for Miley. One inning pitch there for him. One walk and a strikeout. He actually got that ERA down to 3.48. Pompas came in then in the eighth. Council wasn't messing around tonight. He wanted to finish this thing out. Six to two lead. Over the weekend, we saw him mess around a little bit, maybe with McGill or Chafin. He said, no way. We're going to get this win tonight. We're going to make sure we wrap this up. He brought Pompas in in the eighth. One hit given up there. He got a strikeout. And then Milner came in for that ninth inning, got an inning pitched out of him, and one strikeout. So a good outing by the Brewers' bullpen. Backed up a really solid start by Wade Miley, and it was good to see Miley get through six. Could he have gone seven? Yeah, but with the way the strike zone was tonight, pulling Wade Miley out of the game, if we would have left him, you know, Craig Council's kind of at the mercy here. If he'd have left him in and he would have got shelled there in that seventh inning, Brewer fans would have been on him about Wade Miley getting shelled. if he. Pulls Wade Miley and then Paguero would have got shelled. They would have been on him and said, why didn't you leave Wade Miley in there? I think Council has done a very good job this year of not, he he uses guys when he has to, when he knows he needs to use them, but he likes to get his guys his rest. He doesn't like to push them too far. He knows when to push the buttons and when to dial back a little bit. And I, to me, that's very smart out of Craig Council is he, he knows when to rest guys. He knows when I'm going to need him for that final stretch. And you see that. I was listening to uh, Grant Bills talk today on the Bill Michaels show, and he said the same thing. He said, you know, you listen to Craig Council after wins and after losses, and he's the same. He says, oh, well, you know, we played like crap today. Or even in a win, he'll say, well, there's stuff we can improve on. There's stuff we need to fix and we need to move on from. And that's, that's what we're seeing here out of Craig Council is these kind of – he's using guys in situations, but he's not pressing the button. He's not pressing that panic button where – I need to force a guy to go that extra inning for me. I have the bullpen behind him. I can use him here. And that I think that's smart out of him. I don't I don't like using the starters too much because Wade Miley, we've seen in the past, he's injury, he he gets injuries. He's older, gets he's injury prone at this point in his career. And we want to keep Wade Miley out there as long as we can going into the playoffs. So with that, I'm okay with Wade Miley, six innings of effort out of him. It, you know. And I see a lot of guys say, well, isn't your goal to pitch a complete game as a starting pitcher? Well, yeah. Yeah, everybody's goal as a starting pitcher is I want to go to the complete game. I want this game to be in my control the entire time. But these guys understand when Counts comes out there, he's pulling them out for a reason here. He has that better matchup or he thinks, you know, 
you don't need to go out there for that. I have the bullpen backing you up right now. And looking at, they're going to have an off day here coming up. That's going to be a huge thing for them. So he's going to use his bullpen now against the Cubbies here. In this, it, it seems like almost a must. We need to win this series against the Cubs. And that's what he showed tonight was he wasn't messing around. He didn't go to anybody. He didn't trust there in that 6-2 to two finish. He made sure he went to Baguero, Pompas, and then Milner. If he needed him, he would have gone to Devin Williams in that game. Three-run lead. If it would have got shaky for Milner, Devin Williams would have been warming up. He was not going to lose this game here, and he was going to make sure he won it. I love that out of council here late in the stretch. But looking at the Brewers' batting order tonight, Yelich finally back off the Schneid. He was struggling there a little bit as of late. Uh, two for five effort from Yelich, that big leadoff home run there in the first inning. Two strikeouts go along with it, but that home run, it, it got you like goosebumps. It was like, oh, yeah, there we go. Yelich, he's still there. I got a little worried there over the past week. Yelich has been kind of slacking off. He's had a couple games with a couple hits, but to see that ball come off his bat there, it's like, okay, okay. He's still there. He's still got a little bit left in him. He's ready for this stretch run. Contreras, another big game out of William Contreras. Two for five out of him and an RBI. He scored a run there for him. Contreras has been a constant bat in this lineup, and that's great to see. And that trade is still a steal to this day when they got William Contreras. So Contreras staying hot for this Brewers team up to a 279 average. That average continues to climb, so that's great to see. Looking down at that three spot, Sal Frelick got moved up. I like the lineup. I liked the lineup tonight for the Brewers. Yelich, Contreras, Frelick. I love that. I love those top three, having them there. I don't know. Maybe flip Contreras and Frelick around. You could play with that. But as of right now, that Yelich uh, Contreras combo at the top has been working. So you don't want to mess with that too much. But I love that Sal Frelick in that three spot. I think he brings that little dynamic into there. He's got that contact bat. He's got the speed in there in the three spot. I love having Sal Frelick up there at three spot. He had a two for four effort tonight for the Brewers, scored a run for him. He had a, a couple hits. I mean, great effort out of Sal tonight. Willie Adamas, two for four from Willie. It's safe to say Willie Adamas is starting to find his stroke at the plate. That double down the left field line, watching the game, if that baby hit the chalk, it just nicked the chalk. So I, you know, we have had some bad luck this season. To, so to see Willie Adamas get a little bit of luck there, the Brewers had a lot of luck tonight. I mean, there was a couple infield singles. Sal had one up the middle. And then I believe um, Yelich had another one up the middle where it was a diving play. Just got uh, to first. So we had a couple of lucky breaks here tonight against the Cubs. But it's good to see Willie Adamas is making some solid contact again for this Brewers team. Rowdy Telez. Great to see Rowdy is contributing again. One for three effort out of Rowdy with an RBI. Big hit for Rowdy. I hope to see him continue here. Maybe in the DH role once Santana comes back, we'll get to him a little bit on his injury. Hopefully see him back in the lineup here pretty soon. But Telez, one for three effort. Canna, a home run there in that first. Two RBIs for him on that shot. So good to see Mark Canna is continuing to produce for this Brewers team. And Andrew Monasterio, one for four effort there. Got that average back up to 260, staying right there. So that's good to see out of Andrew Monasterio. Terang and Taylor both 0 for 4 on the night for this Brewers team. But from top down a little bit there, that first inning was huge for the Brewers. They got out to a big lead, jumped on them right away, 4 nothing. Then that 4-1, to 1, I was like, oh boy, the Cubbies are going to come right back at them. But then they bounced right back. They had that answer. And if you look at that, and... I know we're jumping around here, but thinking about back to 2021 with this Brewers team, they went and got Willie Adamas and Rowdy Telez. And back in 2021, when we looked at this Brewers team in that month of June and July there where they got hot and that win streak was 11 games, they had that win streak there. They had that home win streak. This Brewers team was rolling. It was fun to watch, but it seemed like this Brewers offense and I got that listening to uh, Grant Bills today, too. I heard him talking about this, too. And it really got me thinking. And he was right in saying that uh, the Brewers always had that answer. Back in 2021, when a team, they would put a couple runs up, and then all of a sudden, we'll just say they were playing the Cardinals. And the Cardinals scored a couple runs right back at them. It's 3-2 now. The Brewers had that answer. They got that. They took the shot, and then they went back out there, and they said, okay, we're going to score a couple more runs on you. And that's where I'm looking at this Brewers team is Craig Council was right. This Brewers team goes with Willie Adamas. We watched it all season long here. Willie Adamas has been struggling. The Brewers 
that's why Craig Council has the most one-run wins this season. And Willie Adamas admitted it himself. He said, we would be way farther up in this division race right now if I was contributing this team. And, and he knows it. And the Craig Council knows it. We know it. We know it by watching it. Willie Adamas is that engine. He's that little extra boost to this Brewers team. And that's what he was in 2021. They were struggling before he came. They picked him up in that trade. And then all of a sudden, this team just took off. And then people forget, in 2021, they added another guy to that roster. Rowdy Telez came over. We had Daniel Vogelbach. He was injured. And they brought in Rowdy. And he took advantage of getting those everyday at-bats with Daniel Vogelbach on the injured list. 272 he hit for us that year. And he became, I mean, a fan favorite for him. Some huge home runs Rowdy hit. And that really boosted that team over the top there, those those two guys. Maybe Carlos Santana or Mark Canna. We've seen a lot out of Mark Canna lately contributing into this. I mean, look at last night's game there against the Cubs. A couple loud outs from Mark Canna. I mean, you're not playing at Wrigley. A couple of those balls might be off the wall there. You have the wind blowing. Might be pushing a little bit. You never know with the weather there at Wrigley what it's going to do to a baseball once it comes off the bat. But that's what I'm looking at is back at in 2021, Willie Adamas was that engine. And right now, Willie Adamas is hitting. This Brewers team is flourishing. And that's what we love to see. Willie Adamas is never going to look like he had a good season this year. 218 average right now. After a 2 for 4 effort tonight, he's sitting at a 218 average with a 700 OPS. It's not, it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. If you look from the outside looking in and you knew nothing about where the Brewers are at right this very second and you weren't watching these games, you would say, wow, Willie Adamas, the guy who is supposed to be that next superstar, the next cornerstone of the Brewers, he's he's sucking. He really is sucking. And I, I got to admit, first part of this season up to about the Rangers series, he sucked. He really did suck for this Brewers team. But now you look at him, and right now Willie Adamas is the engine that's making this Brewers team go. He's got that fire back. He's got the spark back in that lineup. When Willie's up, everybody's up. And that's what we love to see. And that is what is happening right now with this Brewers team is Willie Adamas is going and everybody else is following suit. And it, before it was Christian Yelich was going, William, William Contreras was going, and then there's a few guys here and there who are helping out. But as of right now, what I'm seeing is that this win streak has a large part to do with what's going on with the shortstop there with the Brewers, Willie Adamas inside that lineup. I mean, the pitching staff is pitching great. The bullpen is pitching great. Other guys are contributing into this, but Willie Adamas, I really do think right now is the spark plug. And the key behind this nine-game winning streak for the Brewers heading into the second game here against the Cubs in this series. But with that, we'll jump back into the Brewers and Cubs. And I got off topic there, but we're going to roll back into the Brewers and Cubs here because we have to finish out with talking about the pitiful Cubs uh, scorecard there from last night. Uh, Horner, one for four efforts. Swanson, one for four. Took that huge strikeout from Pomp there in the eighth inning. Ian Happ went one for four on the night. Bellinger, they cooled him off a little bit. Bellinger's been hot. He is a redefined hitter there at 320. And the Brewers cooled him off last night, one for four effort. And Wisdom went one for three with that home run. Happ, Wisdom had those solo shots. But other than that, the Brewers really shut down this Cubs and a hot Cubs lineup coming into here. Jamison Talon, he went six innings, nine hits, four earned runs, two home runs given up, six strikeouts. Drew Smiley then came in for an inning of relief, two hits, one earned run, two strikeouts for him. And then Coos came in to end it there, two innings, no zeros across the board, one strikeout for Coos. So a good outing there by the Brewers there to take advantage of the struggling Cubs pitching last night. We look forward to tonight's game here. 7.05 start. For this one, Burns and Justin Steele will square off. A couple of dominant ace pitchers will square off there at Wrigley Field. Corbin Burns coming into this one 9-6 with a 3.65 ERA. Justin Steele, he's coming in with a 14-3 record, 2.80 ERA on the season. Steele is in the conversation for a Cy Young. So the Brewers will have their hands full with Justin Steele tonight. So hopefully the Brewers can capitalize on some mistake pitches here, and their offense keeps continuing to hit the ball. Looking at the Cubs lineup against Burns, the best success has come from Dansby Swanson. 12 at-bats, two home runs. He's hitting 583. Suzuki's hitting 500 against him in four at-bats. 
Nico Horner's hitting 273 against him in 11 at bats, and Candelario is batting 286 in seven at bats against Burns. Looking against Steele, Brian Anderson's got a 400 average against him, Monasterio 667. Tyrone Taylor's hitting 300. Yelich is at 421. And Adamas is hitting 263 with two home runs. So some decent averages against Justin Steele for the Brewers. They've seen him before. They know what he's got. So hopefully the Brewers can stay hot here against Justin Steele. He's been pitching great as of late for the Cubbies. 705 start. So hopefully the Brewers will get a big game to win against the Cubbies tonight and extend that uh, division lead there against the Cubs here tonight. But with that, we will check out the standings real quick in the Central. The Brewers are up five games on the Cubs right now. Looking at the East, the Braves are leading the Phillies by 12 games. The Dodgers are up 12 games on the Diamondbacks. Baltimore over in the AL leads the East by two and a half games over the Rays. Looking at the Central over in the AL, the Twins are up on the uh, Cleveland Guardians by seven games. And in the West, the Mariners have taken over first place in the West. They are a half a game up of the Rangers. The Houston Astros hanging out at a half game back. The West has been crazy in the AL this year. You wouldn't have expected where the Seattle Mariners started that they would hop back into that race. But they have overtaken the Rangers. The Brewers did something funky to them Rangers when they went down there. So that's crazy to see. But Good for the Mariners out there. I would love to see the Brewers-Mariners match up in the World Series. That would be a sweet series to watch, but who knows? A lot to happen here yet in this wild, or in the division race and in the wild card race. Right now in the wild card, the Phillies, Diamondbacks, and Cubs are all in the wild card. San Francisco hangs one and a half games back of that last wild card spot, along with the Cincinnati Reds, and then the Marlins are hanging out at three back. But with that, we are going to check out the injury front for the Brewers here. And it looks like Carlos Santana, we were talking about him earlier, he has a sprained ankle and he's going to sit out. He sat out last night's game against the Cubs. We will see what happens here with Santana, how it all reacts. I expect him, they're going to use him gingerly out there. Rowdy Telez has been hitting a little bit better as of late, so maybe we'll see a little bit more of Rowdy here. Or potentially, we could see a guy like Brian Anderson potentially get a start here at first base just to give some time off. Maybe Caratini gets in there at first base for the Brewers, too. I'm not sure, but as of right now, it looks like they're going to use Carlos Santana as little as possible and try not to aggravate that at all. Also for the Brewers, Adrian Hauser was placed on the 15-day IL with a little bit of elbow swelling. J.P. Buckus has been recalled from AAA. Adrian Hauser was put onto the IL with something called I Suck, and now we have to find an injury for me, so he was put on the IL. I'm just kidding. Maybe it was. I don't know. But that's where he is. He's going to the IL for the Brewers. J.P. Uh, Buckus will be recalled. I don't know with the Brewers if Julio Tehran, he's on a rehab assignment right now, so maybe we will see a guy like Julio Tehran potentially get back up. He threw 30 of... Uh, 30 of his 43 pitches for strikes on August 25th at High A, Wisconsin. They said his next outing will come with AAA Nashville on August 30th. So maybe we will see uh, Julio Tehran take over that fifth spot in the rotation. It's going to be something to see. Blake Perkins is looking like an early September return. I don't know where. They they have some guys on the injured, uh, injured list right now where I don't know where they're going to return to on this team. But other than that, uh, looks like Jesse Winker is still rehabbing down there with Triple A Nashville. Um, and Aaron Ashby is nearing a rehab assignment right now. I know um, Ashby, Garrett Mitchell, and I think it was Ashby and Garrett Mitchell. Oh, and Blake Perkins were going to be sent down to Arizona to the training facility. They will start down there and work their way back up. So hopefully to see, potentially have Garrett Mitchell back up with AAA at some point here for a final rehab assignment and maybe see Garrett Mitchell yet this season back up with the Brewers. He would be a definite spark into this lineup for the Brewers into that outfield once again. And then when he comes back up, it wouldn't surprise me to see a guy like Joey Weimer potentially get sent back down or 
Garrett Mitchell could be that extra position guy once the rosters expand here on September 1st that we see brought up to the Brewers. But with that, we're going to jump into a little bit of minor league quick. We're just going to check out AAA and just see how we are hitting real quick. Right now, Keston here is still hanging out at that 314 average. I wanted to check out a little bit of Owen Miller's stats. See how some of the major league guys who are down there right now kind of getting some work in to see them back with the crew at some point here. Uh, Owen Miller still sitting at the 264 average. Jesse Winker at 324 for the Nashville Sounds right now. And we will quickly, we're going to run over some Badger news real quick. It looks like They've kind of released the depth chart here for week one against Buffalo. So kind of just to go over that, it looks like they have some depth concerns at tight end for the start of this season here. Veterans Clay Cundiff and Jack uh, Eschenbach are both left off the rosters. Injuries have minimized a number of available players ahead of week one is what we're getting out of training camp so far or uh, for the Badgers. Um, they're looking at Tucker Ashcraft, and he's going to be one of their top uh, tight ends as of right now. And then Hayden Rucci is looking like he's going to back him up there. Hayden Rucci is going to be more in there for the blocking aspect for Hayden. But don't expect him to be left out of the passing game. I really do expect Hayden Rucci to be implemented in there. And then we are looking at the wide receiver room, and it looks like Bryson Green is listed as the starting wide receiver along with Shimmer DK on the outside, and Will Pollen will occupy the slot role. Uh, but it looks like C.J. Williams will get a lot of time there. Uh, he's going to rotate in for Green and D.K. here um, for, for the Badgers here uh, heading into week one. But with that, looking at some of the left guards, Joe Huber has officially earned a starting spot and with uh, center Jake Renfro out for a few weeks and Tanner Borlini taking over in the middle. Uh, they're, they've been watching Huber a lot this offseason, so good to see Huber get in there. He has been he had a good uh, training camp for the Badgers here in spring, so good to see Huber getting in there. It looks like at defensive end, the Badgers have named James Thompson Jr. as a starter. And that means that Rodas Johnson are the top options at defensive end. Him and Rodas Johnson are the top options there. So good to see the Badgers. Uh, kind of, we're starting to figure out what the Badgers are going to look like a little bit heading into week one here. It looks like Tanner Mordecai will be backed up by Braden Locke heading into week one. Braylon Allen and Ches Malusi will have the backfield for them. Green Williams. Uh, looks like Lewis and DK will take over at wide receiver. Slot's going to be looking like Skylar B uh, Bell and Will Pauling. And then Hayden Rucci and Tucker Ashcraft in at tight end. Jack Nelson looks like he's listed at the number one spot right now, along with Huber and Bordellini. Michael Blanturney is going to take over at right guard. And then Riley Molman is going to take over at right tackle. Like we said, Rodas Johnson is going to be in at defensive end. Uh, Gio, Gio Paez is going to take over at the nose tackle. James Thompson at defensive end. Daryl Peterson at outside linebacker. Nami, ooh, they got to really shorten up some names here. Nigo Menda, Meta. We're going to call him MoMA. We're going to call him MoMA here. Inside linebacker. Sorry about that, but trying to figure out names here is a struggle sometimes. Uh, here's an easier one. At inside linebacker, right next to him there is going to be Jordan Turner for the Badgers. Or Jake Cheney could also be in there. Outside linebacker, C.J. Getz. Uh, cornerbacks are going to be R Ricardo Holman and Jonas uh, Dukula. And then Hunter Wohler is going to take over at strong safety out there, along with Austin Brown. Full, uh, at the other safety spots is going to be Latou. And Travion Baylock, and then at cornerback it's gonna be Alexander Smith and the Jews uh, for Queen. At nickelback is gonna be Jason Maltree and Owen Amet 
And then special teams is looking like it's going to be Atticus, Birch Rams, and Jack Van Dyke at the punter position for the Badgers. Nathaniel Vacus is going to take over at the field goal spot uh, with Nate Van Zest. Jack Van Dyke is going to be kickoffs for the Badgers. And then Peter Bowden is going to be the long snapper. The holder is going to be Gavin Myers. And the punt returner, it looking like it's going to be Shimmery DK and Will Pauling. So expect them to be at the kick return spot for the Badgers here. Also heading into week one here against Buffalo. Like I said, we'll cover a lot more Badgers this week. But the depth charts were released, so I just want to go over them a little bit. Sorry about the names. Names are a struggle sometimes to pronounce. I wish they had kind of a pronunciation there across them because son of a gun. You get some of these guys in there, it's like, holy crap, I feel bad for butchering their name. But with that, we are going to jump into a little bit of Packers talk here. Week three of the preseason, Packers beat the Seattle Seahawks 19-15. to uh, For the Packers here, Jordan Love looks like he's ready to go for this Packers team. Nine for 15. 63 yards, one touchdown for Love. He looked good in his final preseason game there. Sean Clifford, 8 for 12, 46 yards. He, George, Sean Clifford proved in this preseason he deserves to be the backup to Jordan Love. And then looking into the backfield for the Badgers, Emmanuel Wilson, 17 carries, 49 yards. Nate McCrary, 7 carries for 24 yards. Uh, looks like A.J. Dillon got in there for five carries, 24 yards for the Badgers. Jordan Love carried it three times for 21 yards. Sean Clifford, four carries for nine. And then Alex Magoo came in there for two carries and four yards. So some good out of so, some good news out of the backfield there. I really do think Emmanuel Wilson has worked his way into that third spot there in the running back room for the Packers. Looking in the receiving room, Malik Heath, I really do think Malik Heath has earned some time with the Packers starters this year, at least in some games, in some packages, in some sort. Uh, four catches for 35 yards. Bonds, he had two catches for 60 yards. Samori Torre had two catches for 16 yards. Luke Musgrave looked good there in the finale. Two catches for 15 yards. Wilson, out of the backfield, he had two catches for nine yards. Christian Watson had a catch for six yards. Romeo Dobbs did not have a catch. Deuce Watts, no catches for him. Jaden Reed, one catch for seven yards. So some good news out of the wide receiver room. Looks like Malik Heath. I really do see him playing himself into a role with the Packers here this next season. And we'll cover the Packers a little bit more here later in the week, especially leading up into that first regular season game with the Chicago Bears. So we'll get into them a little bit later in the week, too. Just wanted to go over the preseason finale for him here. Uh, looks like on the defensive side for the Packers, Kenny Clark had one solo tackle, one QB hit, and a tackle for a loss there. So Kenny Clark looks good. This Packers defense, I think the front is going to finally be A-OK -okay for the Packers. I think it's going to be if that secondary can hold on. I really do think the secondary held down there by Jair Alexander. I think they're going to be o OK this season heading in here. Um, with this Packers defense, though, uh, other than that, Carrington Valentine had three solo tackles for the Packers. Uh, Quay Walker had a one tackle on this game here. Other than that, looks like that was, I mean, that was about it for big stats to be talking about. And then Anders Carlson, big news out of him, two for two on the night there on field goals. His long was 57. He put it right through the upright. So hopefully we saw the, the best side, or well, we saw the worst side of Anders Carlson. So hopefully we have seen the best side of him now. Hopefully we see him start to contribute a little bit into here and nobody has to worry about him anymore. My worry is that in a big situation, does he lose you a football game? And that's what I think the Packers really need to focus on here heading into that regular season is that if he gets to the point where he's costing you games or costing you major points, do we need to look elsewhere for a kicker? Also in Packers news, Pat O'Donnell was let go from the Packers uh, roster here. He was in this game. He had two punts for 99 yards, but he was let go after the game here. They got a little bit younger. They're getting a little bit younger all the way around there. 
Uh, Samori Torre had three returns for the Packers for 17 yards. Jane Reed had one return, did not record a yard there. So let's just, we're looking at the Packers kicking there, though, and it's good to see Anders Carlson knock one through the uprights there from deep. But with that, that's about all I'm going to cover with the Packers uh, going into the regular season here. I'm going to get into them a little bit later this week. But we ran a little bit with the uh, Brewers here today. It's hard not to talk about the Brewers. They're on a nine-game win streak right now. They're going for 10 tonight. So hopefully we will see that 10th win out of the Brewers here coming up tonight here for the 7.05 start with Cy Burns on the mound. But with that, uh, that's about all I have for today of this one. Tomorrow we're going to jump into a little bit more. Uh, we'll see what's going on with the Badgers. We'll see a little bit more. Maybe there's something going on. The rosters are being cut for the Packers. So we'll get that final roster for the Packers here heading into week one. And we will see if the Brewers pick up that win here against the Cubs tonight and stay hot and get 10 in a row. But with that, this has been Wisconsin Sports on the go with Trage. Thank you guys for listening. Deuces, Brew Crew.